Hi, hello and welcome to another part of the Declutter series and I have to be honest, I have no fucking clue what part this is, but today we're talking about powders and we will talk about my finishing powders, my under eye powders and my face setting powders in exactly that order. So let's start with finishing powders because I only have four finishing powders and that's quite easy because I will keep all of them. The first one is the Makeup Forever HD um, Skin Twist and Light. This is a loose finishing powder that has kind of glitter specks to it and I love to wear that from time to time. It's not an everyday finishing powder for me but it's a like I, when I want to feel the fairy vibe, not only on my eyes, when I also want to feel it on the face, then I grab this one and it's actually quite nice. I'm also, of course, keeping the ambient um, lighting powder in the shade Mood Light. This is my favorite finishing powder from Hourglass. And my two matte finishing powders are the Shanta Kai um, Perfect Blur. This I bought because um, Teresa's dad raved about this. I love this powder so much and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to hit pan in the center very, very soon. The other one is a bit newer to my collection. I bought it this summer. This is the Sisley Blur Expert in the shade Light. And the other one, by the way, is Light Medium. This is not as good as the Chantecai one, but it is good. So this is a powder I will finish up, but I will not repurchase. So let's talk about my under eye setting powders. We have nine under eye setting powders. The first two that definitely are going to stay are both of my Huda Beauty Easy Bake powders. This is the Cherry Blossom Cake, this is Sugar Cookie, so it's basically white, translucent, and the pink one. These are probably my favorites. I have to think about that because, you know, I want to do a ranking by the end of the year if they are really the favorites or not, but they are so fucking awesome. I highly recommend this. If you have never tried them, and I don't even bake, I use them just to set my under eye area Oh, it's perfection. Perfection, per fucking faction. This is the pressed powder in the shade Pink Bubble. This is one of those, yeah, pink under eye setting powders. I really like that. It is nothing I would consider repurchasing since this motherfucker is 80 fucking euro and you only get five grams, but it's a good setting powder. And the pink tint is very sheer. I have a feeling that we won't declutter any under eye powder because even my Laura, Mer Laura. <laughs> Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder for the under eyes, I also want to keep that. It's not my fave, but it's nice. Another pink powder, the Vanessa Myricks Evolution Powder in the shade. Yeah, it's pink. I mean, this is probably meant to be used on all over your face, but I like this only for my under eye area. And this has such a finely milled texture. It's actually insane. Stay. So the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Micro Finishing Loose Powder I bought because Tanya B. Wells just always says that this is her favorite finishing powder or like under eye setting powder, let's just say that. I don't really like it, to be honest. Um, you know what? I really don't like it. We will declutter that. I really don't like it. Surprisingly, I do like the Charlotte Tilbury Brightening Under Eye Setting Powder. I hate the normal airbrush powder, it's garbage, but the brightening version is really good. So this is also going to stay. I just used that today, the Rare Beauty Powder. I don't like this on the face, but I love it on the under eyes, so that is going to stay too. I'm really bad at it, am I? And I saved the best for last, because this is probably a surprise. The Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch, this is basically the pressed version of the Cherry Blossom Cake. I want to keep it. I've tested it out now furthermore and let me tell you, the applicator that it comes with is garbage. That is just bullshit. But if you use a brush with it and a light hand, because I think for baking this is too dry, but a nice Normal brush application is actually good. It's not my favorite. It never will be. And it will never be as good as the loose version, but it is a powder I started to like the more I used it. So my first impression of this was really, really fucking bad, but now it's good enough to keep. And now let's do the face setting powders. First of all, I do have this nearly full RCMA powder. I absolutely hate the application way because it is so fucking messy. I have to get myself a separate tray that I can spill the powder in because the lid is way too small for my powder brush. But I don't know, it's just, how the fuck do you use this? But other than that, 
It's a good powder. I understand why people love it all these years. This big boy is the Clay de Peau Beauté, what's it called? The Translucent Loose Powder. You get 26 freaking grams for a bargain of 130 euro. So this is probably, yeah, this is the most expensive powder I own. I think it's very good. I do really, really enjoy it. It is nothing I would repurchase because for that amount of money I can get two other powders or sometimes even three powders depending on what brand you buy it from that are as good or even better. But I still like it, I bought it and I will so use it up. Surprise discovery this year! The glowish, what's it even called? The Luminous Press Powder is good! I'm not a fan of the shade to be honest. I think 00 Porcelain is... It's too pink for me. It kind of looks weird when I apply too much, but I like the finish of it. It is such a good powder. It has good setting power, to be honest. And the luminosity is not like your sweaty glowing, your subtle glowing. Really, really do enjoy this. So of course this is going to stay. But the Makeup Forever HD powder. I did use quite a lot of it, but this has to go. For whatever reason, this disrupts any makeup, any surface, it looks so bad. I'm sorry. The Vive Modern Powder Perfector. Okay, I do have my problems with this powder, to be honest. It's not even a powder where I would say, oh, this looks so fucking awesome, I wanna use it tomorrow again. I think when it comes to face powders, I'm definitely more of a loose powder girl and not a pressed powder girl, besides the glowish one. And my favorite pressed powder is the Sisley Phyto Compact, but that's like 85 euro or 90 euro. I don't know. I think I will keep it a bit longer and put it to the test. Maybe use it a bit more often now to form a good opinion on it. But if you won't see this in my ranking this year, I decluttered it. But for now, I put it back. And to be honest with you, all the other powders that I have here, um, three, six, nine, I keep them. All nine, because I really do enjoy them. So let's make that one quick. I do have the Sigma Soft Focus Powder and this is so good. When this says soft focus, it means soft fucking focus. You look filtered. Love that. Vanilla Bean is the shade that I use. Not a big fan. I wish this would be translucent, but it is what it is. I can still make it work, but I have to actually um, be a bit cautious on what like foundation I use. This is the new Milk Makeup Translucent Eclipse, no, Pore Eclipse Translucent Powder. I really love this. Same with the old Milk Makeup Blur and Set Powder. And you might see there's a teeny tiny bit of a height difference in there. Yeah, that's because the old matte powder, which was the Blur and Set, you got 25 grams, while in this one you get only 7.65 grams for much more money than this. It's a bit of a letdown, but I like them both. They're equally good. This is discontinued, so this is the new friend. I love it. I do have a backup of this. So much do I love this. But this is also very good. The MAC Studio Fix, what's it called? Translucent, yeah, the Translucent Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur Powder. I said that the Vanessa Marix powder is very fine. This is even finer. -er -er -er. When you open this, it sneezes out. It is so freaking fine that your face feels like a velvet surface. I'm so surprised on this and I cannot believe that not more people are talking about this powder because this is a potential viral powder in my opinion. It is so fine. I want to sniff it through my nose like cocaine. Can I declutter a classic powder? I don't think so. Even though I fucking hate the packaging, I featured this in my video of great makeup but bad packaging. I just hate the four compartments and then you have to be careful to like have an equal amount of shit from every compartment, but the powder itself is really, really good. The House Labs um, Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder is a powder that not a lot of people like. A lot of people do criticize it. I really enjoy mine. And mine is a bit loose because I removed the sifter that was on top. I hate sifter, so it had to go. But I like the powder actually. I think it leaves a nice finish. It sets the makeup. It does what it is supposed to do. I have two Laura Mercier powders. One is the classic translucent loose setting powder. Absolutely stunning. But even more stunning is the tone up version. This has a slight, the slightest pink tint. Don't expect the same pink tint as you get in the cherry blossom uh, one from Huda for the under eyes. No, no, no. This is 
very very light pink and this is so freaking good you look so nice and fresh and beautiful and glowing and stunning and i don't have enough words to describe this so both need to stay of course and even though the name of this powder is kind of like because it's a glass powder and the first thing i thought about what yeah this has little tiny bits of glass in it no it's just a very very luminous setting powder that is light reflecting but it's not glittery light reflecting that's why i love this so much rodeal in my opinion is probably a brand that is very very underestimated i never hear people talk about their stuff and i have to admit that the glass powder is actually also the only thing i ever tried from them okay you guys that's it for powder i only decluttered two which is fine to me i decluttered my makeup forever powder and the other makeup forever powder Oh, maybe I'm just not a fan of Makeup Forever powder. Oh, what a coincidence. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest. And if you subscribe, you can also see what other kind of declutters are coming. And if you go to the channel, you can see what other declutters I already did. And you can cry with me over the beautiful makeup that I just threw out. So thank you. And I will see you in the next one.